Yeah. I think we have sound. Yeah? You can hear me? Or okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sound uh, Man, could you please uh, lower the lights a little bit? We don't like to be in the spotlight. We're nerds. <laughs> so it's important that you can see the screen well because we're going to show a lot of visual stuff today. Perfect. Okay, I think we should just uh, start. I think it's time. Yeah. Sure. Okay, welcome everybody. It's nice to see you. Nice that you took, uh, took the time to come here to this room and uh, visit us. Uh, we are going to um, talk about how we ended up making a whole new animation production workflow, uh, combining like classic 3D animation uh, with new real-time game engine features, where we actually record puppet animation using uh, this Xbox controller. That exact. Yeah, this yeah. one. This yeah. I, mean, I use this for work. Um, we're gonna do a presentation of uh, of the project, and then we're gonna do try to do a live demo, which is always very scary, uh, of Unreal on this laptop live for you to see how it works. And uh, after that, I think we'll spend probably 30 minutes together. And then the last 30 minutes, you're welcome to uh, come up on stage and try it yourself or uh, talk to us or ask us any questions. And also feel free to just ask during yeah, the presentation. Just, uh, just keep it, yeah, keep yeah. it uh, simple. Yeah. So um, I think we'll just Start. Start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. My name is uh, Rune. I'm a self-taught senior 3D animator and VFX compositor. Uh, I've been working in the TV and film industry since 1993, which makes me really old. Uh, I worked in several animation companies in Norway, and I ran my own company company for a couple of years before I got employed in the design department at NRK in 2006. Yeah, and for those who don't know, NRK is uh, the government-funded um, <laughs> channel, like the BBC or the Denmark Radio of Norway. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I'm also working there. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Animation degree, and I've been working with web design and web development and animation and lots of stuff uh, at NRK since uh, around 2004. Uh, but I've also released a couple of, uh, of computer games uh, in my own uh, as a solo developer. That's us. Okay, so uh, let's go back the to what, what, what the, the big challenge. Um, <laughs> like during uh, COVID and home uh, office working, um, the children's department at NRK, they had booked 14 episodes of uh, animation for a new show called Fantus and the Machines, uh, where this character, little uh, uh, cute character, uh, Fantus, was going to look at different uh, types of machinery, like tractors and bulldozers and excavators, and sort of, uh, yeah, it's a bit like a learning uh, show about cool machines. Yeah, in total about like 30 minutes of uh, animation. Yeah, so we thought, okay, 30 minutes, we are two people, how the hell are we gonna manage yeah. to do all that work? Because at, at animation, home. <laughs> yeah, at, from <laughs> home. And we'd actually never met no. during that. We just uh, met over, over Slack. Yeah. So uh, let's just, just yeah. first let's re rewind a bit and, and uh, give some background to, to, to what we're going to talk about. Yeah, because uh, NRK has had its own characters for uh, older kids since 2006. But in uh, 2019, we wanted to try out a new concept for the younger ones, like one to two year old kids. And uh, then Fontes was born, it's the little purple guy in the middle here. Uh, he was originally developed for Mini Kids, which is, uh, was, was like a test project. Made uh, we were like a small team, only six people, I think. And uh, yeah, so and it quickly became super popular, and everyone just wanted more and more and more. Yeah, and, uh, Fantus became a superstar for for the kids and for the parents who wanted to drink their morning coffee when their kids were looking yeah. at, the, <laughs> at the television. Yeah, so they, uh, they actually made a physical puppet of him and implemented him into the shows for the older kids and other stuff. And uh, it became a season two and a season three. And this mm. sounds good, but uh, actually there is a problem. And uh, to understand why it is a problem, we have to look at the way we produced this because it was yeah. like short episodes of yeah. just Fantus in 3D. So it was quite a lot of work. So yeah, that's the context. Yeah, it was done like a, in a traditional 3D animation workflow, uh, but we had optimized it quite a bit. So we had uh, just a one frame storyboard 
like a idea slate. And then uh, we made a blocking pass where we just moved Fantus through the scene without actually animating him, just to get a sense of the time needed for him to do all the stuff he needed to do. And then we sent that blocking pass to the sound people, and they, uh, uh, where am I? And they, uh, uh, the voice actors used this to record the yeah, dialogue. The dialogue yeah. and the voice of the Fantus. Yeah, and then uh, I got it back. And I used that blocking pass to, uh, <coughs> uh, and the voice recording to animate the whole sequence. And uh, it's uh, this is the traditional way of work. Yeah. This is how Pixar works when they make their animation uh, films. Yeah, and uh, so you see it, all the red uh, lines, at the bottom here. That's keyframes. That's where we lock his uh, his position in space. And as you can see, it's almost all the frames all the time. It's this takes a lot of time to do. And, uh, yeah, it is, yeah, it is a lot of work yeah, to, because yeah, you have to pose him in and move all the yeah. his body positions and pose him in all these different key poses that you. And then the, yeah. the, 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 the I guess the, the the machine does some sort of in betweening yeah, of this. Does the in betweening, but you see there's a lot of keyframes. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and then when that part was done, we had the rendering, and uh, that's the final calculation which makes the sort of realistic image you see on TV. And it um, even this simple thing took like between 15 minutes and two hours per frame. And we had like 3,000 frames in each episode to render. So you, you can do the math, it's a long render. It's a very long render. Uh, yeah, here you can see the, uh, yeah. This is the, the blocking part in the beginning here. Then we fade over to the final rendered images. And between these two passes, there's a lot of work, many, many hours. And uh, it quickly became uh, obvious that it was too much work for one person to do all this 3D work. Yeah, because all this uh, photos yeah. before had only been done by Rune, so yeah. he was the sole animator on, on these uh, previous seasons. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so. And I knew that the children's department, they would want more and more and more. So that's why I started looking into Unreal to see if there was something we could do to save time. I quickly figured out it was not suitable for this. So uh, because he's like moving around all the time, he's touching stuff and uh, yeah, it's a difficult task to, to do in Unreal. So one week later, we got uh, request for a new show, actually, which was Fontes and the Machines. And here Fontes is just going to walk around and look at stuff and point and wave and not touch anything. Yeah. So it was perfect yeah. for a workflow with Unreal Engine. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, Unreal Engine, what, what is it? Um, it is a game development engine, um, a, a, a suite of software you use to produce computer games. It's uh, free to download and use. And it's uh, being used not only in the games industry, but also like in architecture, visualization uh, business, and in special effects in TV, like the Star Wars shows, where they use Unreal to make uh, like fake backgrounds behind the actors. Uh, it's also being uh, used uh, a little bit in TV broadcasting, because it's such a powerful 3D engine that runs in real time. And NRK had started, uh, we had started testing it out for some very simple 3D the graphics. The white dots. Yeah, <laughs> some small dots and some, like, testing out, if, see if it was viable, viable for, for TV production, because 3D TV production is quite expensive and time consuming. So this was, yeah, we were sort of testing the waters and see, can we do something cool with Unreal? Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Not then nothing like what we were going no. to do. No. So anyway, uh, my initial thought, was just to make uh, simple loops in Maya, which is my main program, and um, put them into Unreal. And, uh, put them together there and render with Unreal. Yeah, that just some yeah. simple, we, like you would yeah. make some simple waves and points, and, and, and because Fontes was just yeah. going to he look. He was just going to stand there and point and look. It, he was never going to move, actually. Mm. But then Matisseur came back. Yeah, and he had this uh, great idea that maybe, just maybe, we could use the game controller and move him around. And 
so we did. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah. Because I had been uh, out uh, from uh, NRK for a couple of years uh, developing uh, a 3D game uh, as a solo dev, and I came back with um, uh, with some newfound knowledge about creating characters. And I had this idea when I saw Duna's character, I thought, hey, maybe we could make Pontus as an actual game character. And um, usually, um, uh, when you make a, a game character, you have um, you have a model. Uh, you yeah the uh, yeah like the, the the actual mesh of the model that this is Fantus and inside there's a skeleton rig you can see the, the these are his, uh, his bone yeah. bones actually and Rune uses uh, these bones it's, to it's the same rig actually that yeah. we use yeah. in Maya but uh, so it's transferable to Unreal yeah. so it's you move the bones and Fantus moves with the bones. But the cool thing about uh, uh, Unreal is that you can have these animations that Runa has made, but I can also override them in, in Unreal in real time. I can uh, twist them and move them and scale them and, and move them around. Um, so I thought uh, maybe we should try to, to see if we can sort of combine animation and real time using this, this game controller. Uh, so uh, like a character has, like I said, it has a, a body, it has a skeleton. It has usually a state machine. Uh, which defines all the states or the animations uh, that the, the character can use or do. And it has like a character uh, controller uh, that handles the inputs or the events that we want to happen. It's more a bit like the, the brain of the, uh, of the show. <laughs> and um, we're going to show, uh, like all this, we're going to show you like for real in, in Unreal afterwards. So, but of course, this was easier said than done. I had not used Unreal uh, much at yeah, all. Neither of us had. Yeah. We had opened it and... Yeah, so it was a lot of work just trying to figure out stuff. And this here is uh, Fantas' uh, state machine uh, as, uh, as of today. These are the things that he can do. He can sort of, uh, he can jump, uh, he can turn left and right, and he has this idle position, which, which is uh, basically uh, uh, a, a central position that we go out from. It's like a, a, the root position yeah. of Fantas. So Yeah, most, almost everything has to go through the idle position. Yeah. So he can stop, space. go from idle, and do jumps and uh, turns, and he can point, and he can do all sorts of stuff in this uh, state machine that we built for Fantus. Um, and this is a very common way of linking uh, animations in a character, because you need to know that you can't play two animations at the same time. That would probably be a bad thing. Uh, and this is, uh, sorry for the spaghetti, all the coders out there, sorry. <laughs> uh, <coughs> we're using blueprints in, uh, in Unreal. Uh, so it, it's a uh, it's a uh, messy but uh, somehow easy for us to to understand how this works. Uh, these are all the events or the triggers that uh, are that Fontes is, uh, Fontes can do. Like if you press a button here, uh, uh, up here, like here are the buttons, they will do all these different things. That yeah. So uh, that's how how this is sort of set up. And of course, I'm going to show you afterwards in uh, in Unreal. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, <coughs> but there's one problem with a normal way of moving a character in the game because normally you you control the character with your controller and it moves the character and then it plays the animation of like the feet moving or whatever and in approximately the correct speed this leads very often to like the feet sliding on the ground and if there's anything an animator hates is sliding feet so. We couldn't have that, at least not if you wanted to replace the hand animation animated look we had in the mini kits. So uh, what we ended up using instead is uh, something called root motion. And uh, this is a system where the animation, the, the movement of the character is baked into the animation. So the, actually the animation itself actually moves the character along its path. Hmm. In space. In so space, yeah. So, yeah. so the so character just follows along with, with the Runa's animation. Yeah. And that's so good then, because and then, then you get yeah. like the he's moving from side to side and all that little stuff that we would have lost if we have just moved him along. Yeah. Uh, and the feet are stuck to the ground, which yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it it's it, it is a little harder to get the looping to work because it not only has to loop in time but also in space. So and uh, it limits speed changes a little bit. But mm. all in all, it was a 
good way of doing it. Yeah, it uh, looked so. much better when, uh, it, it, like my first prototype where he was just sliding and walking and, and rotating, it, it didn't look too good, but <laughs> he, was so, he was so happy. Though. Yeah, <laughs> it worked, but it looked bad. <laughs> okay, so um, so we got him moving, That's that was good. Uh, the next yeah. part of the puzzle was, because Fontes was actually going to be in the real world, he, he was going to look at real machine in film before, like this was pre-recorded materials uh, of like tractors or excavators or stuff. Uh, so uh, we needed a way to see uh, the actual video behind Fontes. Yeah, to, to play him, act yeah. him out in, yeah. in real time. So yeah. on, the, on the screen you'll see sort of a composite of... Uh, this, is, uh, he, he's, uh, this is Fontes. Uh, and this, he, he walks inside this uh, flattened dome, almo almost like a sphere that is flattened. And onto this uh, dome we project the video from the camera. Yeah. Onto, no matter where the virtual camera is, we will always see the background. And then we have yeah. to match the, the, the camera position in Unreal yeah. like to, the to match. Perspective to yeah. get him. So the camera the angle, the, the camera width, the camera height, uh, yeah. everything has to match. And we do that by, by hand. And also we have to set up lights so the sun shines in the correct uh, way uh, to, yeah. to get, yeah. get him sort of into the world where you can have shadows on the ground. Yeah. Um, there was also one more thing that we got from using Unreal is that uh, we could use uh, the voice recording from Fantus, the actor who played Fantus, and we took the voice recording and we took the loudness of the audio file to drive the bone of his jaw so we could get like mouth movements for free. We didn't have to animate the lip, yes. lip sync. So we just let the actor play and then Fantus was just like, bah, 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 doing the same talk as the actor. So yeah. that was a yeah. lot of uh, work Save, saved. Save yeah. time, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And then uh, we had to make uh, make sure that we could actually record this animation because now we'd made a, c a character with the with which we could control like a game character in any any other game. Um, and what you see here is uh, a recording of what I, I've done here with Fantus. And I can I can see you can see I can scrub back and forth. It's almost like video editing almost after we're done. So you can uh, see uh, you can we can change a little bit of the animation, maybe the angles, maybe you should point a little bit different. So it's a very flexible and very uh, intuitive way of, of uh, working. Yeah, but it, he's still 3D, so he can still like moving, yeah. move the camera a little bit if you... Yeah, if it's a bit better, off. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very uh, new, it's almost like recording motion capture, where you actually, instead of using a motion suit and a big studio, we just capture his motion with the Xbox controller and save this, uh, his animation as the 3D file inside. Uh, this is something that Unreal actually has yeah. built in as a take recorder, where you can actually take or record gameplay from a game inside the engine. Yeah. Yeah, and there was um, one, another big advantage of using Unreal is like their lack of rendering time. Uh, each of these episodes uh, rendered in a couple of minutes. Whilst doing this in, in Maya would take days or maybe weeks. Remember the 3000 frames times two hours, yeah. So this was a huge time saver in just like the final stage too. Mm. So it actually took longer to, for you to send the files to the VFX yeah, department I, I have to do the color correction. Yeah, I have a crappy internet <laughs> line at home. So, <laughs> so it was faster to render than actually copy yeah. the files over the yeah. network. Yeah, <laughs> so I, yeah, I think it was like 15 minutes to render the first uh, episodes, and then yeah. I would have to spend a week to copy it over to work. So <laughs> anyway, working from home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> anyway, so so creating this controllable version of Fontes and uh, making the system of displaying the video in the background and uh, the system for recording the uh, animation and lip sync in real time and rendering really, really fast resulted in this. Pantus fra Minibarna er tilbake. Nå er Pantus ute på eventyr. I maskinenes verden. Fantus og maskinene. Det er nå i NRK TV og i NRK Super. Yeah, so this was the trailer for the first season. Mm. Uh, we made in total 14 episodes. Um, and including the, the research and development time from home office, the two of us made it in about three months. Yeah. 
A little over three months, the whole yeah. total in, from in 14 the TV, episodes. In TV world, that's super quick. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fast. Yeah. <laughs> So the result of this uh, was it was an amazing success for NRK uh, Super, the, like the children's department. It was actually the fifth most watched TV show in Norway. Uh, it was sold to a bunch of countries. It got three more seasons and another like with the animals. And it has uh, the, season, the machine seasons have like 50 million views in Norway, yeah. which yeah. is <laughs> we're like five million people. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> crazy uh, view numbers because yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a show that uh, I mean, both uh, kids are and cute animals. I mean, yeah, both, a good combination. Both the dad and the kid is happy. Yeah. So that's uh, how we uh, sort of ended up solving this uh, problem of creating uh, lots of animation in a short amount of time, creating a whole new uh, system of uh, animating. Uh, and even Epic Games uh, got in touch with us and, and wanted to know more about this process because uh, in the in the VFX business they usually use uh, uh, Unreal for the backgrounds. It's not so often that you use it for like the main characters. So they were really interested in, in what yeah. we've been doing. So with that, I think uh, it's time to go to the demo. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit scary, just so you know. Maybe yeah. something crashes. I hope you're fine with that. And of course, <laughs> after we've uh, after we, I've done some, uh, show you some of the Unreal stuff, you're, we're going to sort of end the presentation. Then you can just come up here if you want to try yourself, play around if you have some questions or... Yeah, yeah just please come chat. up and try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't feel, uh, feel uh, embarrassed. Please uh, come. It's, we're, we're friendly. I'm just going to quit out here and go to Unreal. Yeah, you can see Unreal. Yeah. Okay, so, so now we are in, in, the, in the scene that I sort of showed the composite of before. Uh, I can probably move around. This is Fantus in a wireframe version. You can see this is the, the, the dome I talked about. Like, no matter where we position the camera, we will always look at the video from the background. So we don't have to match the, the video and the background. They will always sort of fit. We only have to match the camera compared to the real world camera. And the camera, yeah, you can see. Only to the flat ground, yeah. actually. So, so here is the, like, you can see the purple thing here. That's the, that's the camera looking at Fantus. And here is the, um, the sunlight ca casting the shadow. And if I go to a more different view, you should probably see it. Yeah, so here we are looking at Fantus, and what if we go to the camera, this is sort of how what the camera looks like in in Unreal. We can see Fantus is here. Um, the light is there, and now I'm gonna try see if this works. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it works. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I'm controlling Fantus. Um, I can make him, uh, like, uh, maybe I should be like this so you can actually see me controlling him. So I can, uh, I can make him walk around. Uh, I can make him turn around and look at the camera maybe. Hello, Copenhagen! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have this shortcut button. I can always press this to make him look at the camera. Or I can make him look at some... We have an object in space that we can move around, so we can always follow his... We don't have to ha hand animate his face to look at something. We can just have this focus point that he will always look at automatically. It also saves us a lot of time. So now the focus point is somewhere behind here in the, in the background. And uh, like, uh, there's a limit of how many buttons you have on these controllers. And how many fingers and we how have many to push fingers. them. So, so there, <laughs> like, there's not too much like we can do in real time, but he can be like enthusiastic, he can wave, he can do some clapping, I think he can jump, and he can probably, oh, yeah, he can fall on his butt, probably get up as well. Uh, let's see, we can uh, quickly turn around, he can point. Uh, so yeah, he can sort of, yeah, tilt his head a little bit. Uh, yeah, very cute. Yeah. So now I'm going to see, like, if this was um, a, a, a TV show or a, an episode we, we're actually going to work uh, work on, uh, I would press the, the big record button up on the, you see, the Fountas Zero Tree Take. I would press that button, and then I would start recording whatever I'm doing here. And this would save as a, as a 3D file of Fountas's movement. So let's just try it. I'm not going to record it because that's a bit slow, but I'm, I'm just going to pretend that we're recording. So if I press play now, we should be able to... Yeah. Hi, Fontus. Hi, Fontus. Oh. Ja, hör. Ah. Ja. Det är en julastig. En julastig? 
se. Julasten løfter i skuffen. Ja, opp. Og ned. Hva skal julasteren nå? Yeah, that would that would be like a okay. That was a decent take, but the, yes. what the cool you would thing have is had that to do it all over again. Yeah, all that. yeah. the thing is that the, <laughs> the the cool thing about working like this it's very different from animating uh, like in the traditional way of, of like pose to pose. This allows for much more freedom and creativity. And oh, uh, if the yeah. director wanted to see this, we could just screen grab it and send it to him in in a, in a couple of minutes. And he said, no, uh, Fontes should actually be uh, in this scene. He has to come from this side. Because yeah. of some reason, <laughs> yeah. or uh, or maybe oh no, I want him to uh, like when the the car comes in, I want him to go like oh fall and then point or yeah. yeah. It's so almost like being in the studio actually with the yeah. with like the real puppets and stuff. So, so it's kind of the same workflow as they do in the studio. And if something doesn't work, we don't animate it again. Mm. We just we don't fix it. We just take a new yeah. shot. Take a new shot and try yeah. again. So it's it's a it's a whole new way of, of working uh, as as an an animator. Uh, and it's a quite a lot of fun as well. Um, I'm going to show you something that's um, not official yet. Uh, it's a sneak peek of the new uh, project that uh, we've been working on for last six, seven, eight yeah, months. Because they, of course, they wanted more. Yeah, yeah. because this was so popular, <laughs> and they said, "Okay, we need more fantas, more fantas, more fantas." And uh, now we've been working on a new. Um, new show where Fontus is going to play with kids in the studio. And that's a whole nother ballpark. I mean, that's very different from uh, just pointing and looking at something. Now he's going to uh, walk around. He's going to do the same yeah. things as the other toddlers in the studio. Like Climb so. up on top of stuff and yeah. jump down. Jump, and then crawl, yeah. balance. Uh, so we had to make a lot of, of new animations. And as you saw uh, on the... Um, like we have a limited amount of buttons, we we can't make more functionality because we we don't have more buttons, and it's really hard uh, to even remember if you if we had even more even buttons. Even though we actually bought these expensive Xbox controls with extra buttons on them, yeah. But still, it's it's but it's too they're much. They're just the same buttons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, well. instead of limiting Fantas to only having his uh, uh, state machine uh, control his animations. What we figured out is we can do some really cool stuff. We get in Unreal, since this is we have control over his bones inside his body, we can have one animation play from the pelvis bone down, so he can walk around, and then we can mix it with another animation that plays from the pelvis and up. So we can start of see combine versions where he can yeah. he can walk around and clap, yeah, or he can uh, point and fall down. So suddenly there's a lot of more uh, expressibility in in Fantasy's repertoire, yeah, and, and then the timing thing. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, because uh, we, we uh, you saw me now play out the scene and it wasn't too cool. Uh, I, I mess messed up his head direction and stuff. But uh, what we now do is that we can set uh, uh, in, we have like a, a sequence that is playing along with the uh, animation re recording. And we can say um, two, uh, after two seconds, Fantus should fall down. And after three seconds, he should get up and look at the camera and laugh. And then we can just set up these uh, event like triggers. triggers yeah. yeah, it's like having extra buttons, but you can precisely control when they are going to fire. And also, we have. I'm going to show you now the, the other project that's not official yet. So just let me open up. It takes just a few seconds to open up uh, a new uh, scene here, in a level in. Uh, so here we are in this new show where Fantas is in, in the studio with the kids. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see. Can you see this green thing over here? Yeah, like this. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the green thing is a, is a trigger that is based uh, that is a, a collision trigger. So we also made functions that whenever Fantas crosses or collides with this trigger, something can happen. Maybe he plays an uh, animation. Maybe he falls down. Or so maybe. we can do like precise stuff either in time or in space. So this uh, means that we have a lot more control now than the okay. first version. Yeah, and it's a huge time saver too. It's, uh, Absolutely, and then we can sort of just precisely take uh, uh, like set all the different uh, events to happen in there. So we're going to try to see see how this works. In this scene, I've set up uh, this uh, collider to um, uh, when Fantus uh, coll collides, he's going to try to crawl up on this tile over here. So this is uh, a much more complicated shot, and I'm probably going to mess it up. Uh, but uh, here, uh, just click inside. It's very dark. Yeah, it's a bit dark. Hang on, I'm just going to fix that. Okay. Let's go 
Yeah, the word process probably. Okay. Now it's uh, oh, it's so small. Usually, like working on in Unreal, you need a 4K screen. <laughs> it's like two, uh, f uh, full HD is. It's not good enough. Uh, let's see. Here we go. I think this is better. A little better. Okay. So now uh, I'm gonna try to walk Francis in. Then I have him look, and then look at this, and I'm gonna try to make it work. I'm out. gonna climb that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was a bit. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. And he almost <laughs> lost his balance. <laughs> Can I do it? Can I walk it? Oh, let's stop here. He's going to look down and he's going to do a jump, a big jump. Woo! Yay, it worked. <laughs> and then I could probably play the, the video in the background with the kids. Uh, I don't exactly remember uh, the story in this, uh, in this shot, but he, the, the kids yeah. are balancing on these tiles and Fantas is sort of playing along with them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of hard because they are uh, composited on you, but you can, barely, you can see some kids there, I think, yeah. in the background. And Fantus is going to be there playing with them and, and sort of, yeah. Learning from, learning what they from do them. Learning from them and, and, yeah. It's a li little bit like monkey see, monkey do. Uh, so he is always also going to try to, yeah, do the things that the kids do. And do a uh, whoa jump. <laughs> oh, that was close. That was pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so this is uh, how we can do uh, much more complicated animations. And of course, we've upped everything. Now we can do 4K rendering in with ray tracing we got the shadows looking nice uh we're very much very close yeah, to the the three the like the 15 to two hour rendering time per frame but still keeping it around one to two seconds per frame yeah. so it's still super fast to render it's super fast to edit and it's even more accurate now than before so uh i think we'll uh, a bit. i think that's more or less uh yeah. what i'm gonna show i think Maybe we should just uh, go back and sum up the sum up the things yeah. we've talked about. Yes. So uh, one big pro is like the real time preview stuff. It's uh, very nice to see what we're doing. Uh, Unreal is a really robust three D engine with lots of features. Uh, the blueprint programming and node editor uh, editing mm. stuff is good. So even stuff people like him can. Yeah, <laughs> even I yeah. can do, do uh, stuff. <laughs> I no, let him do it. So I <laughs> no, but it's it's yeah. programming, but yeah. in a different yeah. way. It's it's still yeah. logic. It still flows, and still like uh, you can do anything. But it's more uh, easy for uh, designers and animators and coders to work together in in this visual way. Yeah, there's very few limits, but. Uh, it's not always uh, easy to know exactly how to do stuff because yeah, there's uh, a lot of beta features and it's not stable and it's not very well documented. Yeah, and also it, Unreal Engine is so big, it can do almost anything because it's, an, it's a game engine. You can make anything with it, basically. And it's so hard to figure out how you, you have some idea and trying to figure out how to actually do it is so hard because it's not super well documented and examples are not always what you're trying to do so it's uh, sometimes very hard to figure out uh, yeah, your we have to like it. invent our own workflows yeah. basically yeah it's all the time yeah. and it has no true shadow pass that's mm -hmm. that was a big problem for us because we we had to send this to uh, to the compositing guys and they we put it on the real background later mm. and without the shadow it's uh, it's hard to, to to link him to the ground so we had to fake that with the some extra rendering, yeah, we can, mm. if anyone's interested, they can <laughs> talk to us. If anyone is <laughs> and know anything about shadow passes in a real, just come talk to us, because yeah. that's still a, a big headache for, uh, for like, uh, doing uh, compositing yeah. in, in real time. Yeah, yeah I, think, uh, I think that's, uh, anyone, like, if, uh, any questions? If anyone has any questions oh. right now, so uh, we can have some, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, after it, we'll, uh, yeah. In a wee t white T-shirt there. I think. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, how did the the voice actor know yeah. what to, in to uh, say in the in in the scene bef before they were animated? That was up yeah. actually up to the director and the, yeah, the they just 
did a test. <laughs> they they tested yeah. it and see saw yeah. is this okay? Like they tried yeah. to. They, tried they, they looked at the background like yeah. we did actually, and then tried to figure out. Oh, he would probably laugh at the machine there and. So, so, so they had yeah. lots of of, uh, of background video, and they sort of okay. I, I'm going to imagine that Fontus is here, and he's going to say this, and it's and they just made a, a script based on what they had filmed. Yeah, and then so we adjusted our stuff to the voice yeah. actually. So, so when we got the final voice, uh, then we just plugged the voice into uh, to Fontus, and it just went yeah. like this very yeah. easily. But it, he's it, a puppet, it's so like it's the fine. Most simple uh, <laughs> automatic lip sync uh, stuff ever. It's yeah. <laughs> Just rotating the drawbar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so you are calling about beta feature? What is it? What is exactly the beta feature? Is it because the, the actual background movie is that yeah. including with the animation or? Uh, so there's a lot of things that yeah. are in beta all the time. Al like, almost everything. Uh, like actually. Unreal Engine <laughs> itself is it's uh, uh, in a comp, uh, like com uh, uh, like in flux. It's it's always changing, and uh, each new version has something that works better and something that works uh, less good. Yeah. Um, so uh, lots of the beta stuff that we used is. Um, the take recorder stuff was in beta when we started using it. The rendering, the rendering is also very cool. much like uh, real ray tracing. Lots of it, it's like uh, do it uh, yeah. on your own. Like uh, we don't take any responsibility. Just don't use this in production, kind of. Uh, so uh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of uh, the plugins uh, that are in the in the um, yeah, project are beta plugins. Yeah. I'm just uh, uh, from the, on the top of my mind. I can't remember all the features that are not, but many of them are like bugs that are still not fixed yeah. in the and editor. Even like the I importing of some animation files is mm. it comes up with these warnings all the time, but yeah. we just ignore them and then yeah. we go on. <laughs> just ignore the warnings. That's <laughs> the uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just wondering. So is it is it not blocking for you to make sure you can make your uh, scene or because you were talking about the old way i never saw that so it's all new to me yeah. is that now completely off the track and you're yeah. only going this way or i think no, it's it there's a room for for both like the, if you do it by hand like moving fontes uh, or any character like uh, in the traditional way you get very precise you can make perfect animation like he yeah. touches this and he yeah. like uh, does this this is hard yeah, to do in real time even though we stuff. can pre-animate the stuff it's yeah. hard to get then we have to put yeah. everything but the cool uh, thing now yeah, is that we uh, can we can combine these two worlds. Yeah. We can uh, Rune or Brian, who's another animator working on this uh, children's new children's show, they can make very specific animations. Like we can make, I can make him walk up to the this place, and uh, yeah. the animators can make a very specific animation that does like yeah, so we, it looks perfect. We have the possibility now to to export the animation actually out of Unreal and into Maya and yeah. add stuff and then take it back. So we. We're more open. Yeah, to stuff it's a, now, fle a more flexible system yeah. than than ever. Uh, but of course, the, the the animation itself, all the movements of Fontus, is still made by animators, okay. and that's yeah. sort of important to to note. It's it's not yeah. that Unreal does all this animation no, for free. Yeah. It's still like a handmade. Uh, uh, it's yeah, you it's can a, show it's them the animation library. There's uh, yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of work yeah, yeah. in the in the animations of uh, of Fontus. So it's. Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to see, maybe even here, but uh, found this. Like, there's a lot of animations here. Like all and these, all these are pre-animated, yeah. exported out of Maya, and then imported into yeah. Unreal. Just small, so short, usually yeah. loops that we can sort of combine yeah. and use. It, it, it's a... almost back to the where I was intending to go with l cutting it together in Unreal. Only we used the game controller yeah. and do it in real time. So yeah. Okay. Clear. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Yeah. Hey, um, how many actions can Fountas do when you have the controller? Right now, it's uh, uh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> three, four <laughs> five, yeah. six, seven, and, and, and then nine, we have ten. the shift button. So yeah, actually. So it's like 12, 13 uh, real time yeah. Yeah. stuff. But of course, you can um, map it. You can have like yeah. a MIDI controller, maybe a keyboard. Or we can have another yeah. guy with another no, controller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because when you talked about it, I was just thinking it doesn't seem like there is a, a, a key issue. But you, you were talking about, I was thinking like you could hold down a trigger to do a modifier or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah, it would easily be about that. Yeah. And then I was also wondering, and I don't know if this makes sense, but right now what you're showing here up here right that's like kind of exactly like the world works while you're recording 
uh, would it maybe make sense to do something like in video games where you have a UI layer where you could do stuff? So, for example, maybe you could have, a, instead of a weapon wheel, then you could have a canned animation wheel or something yeah. like that. And then this UI layer, right, it only exists in your view, but the view you export is different. Like it's, anything is possible. Yeah. It, like we could, it doesn't have to be, it could be a fake set, it can be a real uh, video, it can be things in front, it can be things in, ba in the back. Like uh, if you have the imagination and the, the technical skills, like anything is really possible because it's it's uh, a very open yeah, we, we, sort of uh, engine. Yeah, you we, can we set it up this way because yeah. it's easy to control yeah. in for TV production. So mm. he moves in like a strange yeah, way. Yeah, he, he's like tank it's control. Like, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, <laughs> he doesn't, uh, like you can't move him around like in a, uh, like you would in an as in easy pl uh, easy playable yeah, game. Yeah, like so moving back and forth and sideways like and then you use the, uh, the triggers, triggers to, to turn him. Yeah. So it's, uh, but you can come and try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free uh, afterwards yeah. to, to uh, try yourself. Uh, another question you talked about uh, one of his uh, views snapping to a focus point. Uh, mm. That focus point, is that a part of, is that set up as part of the environment? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's actually just a 3D object yeah, that I made that, to, that, to uh, yeah, that we just animate to yeah. where we want him to look. So we do that um, yeah. before we record. So it's this. So this the, in this sequence, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you see here, it, it it's following yeah. the the pink girl here. Yeah. So when he's uh, playing in this scene, he will always we look can. at uh, the pink girl and maybe okay. on the yellow uh, here as yeah. well. Yeah. So we, we do a pause first and then just animate where yeah. we would. It's very simple. You just move this so eye around, and Fontes will. Yeah. You can choose when to look at it or not look at it. So it's uh, again very flexible. Anything is possible. Yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's nice. Cool. And we can of course override it too. Yeah. The... If there are no more like. Uh, yeah. I can have a question. So in the beginning, you mentioned that you have a sphere on which you map the, yeah. Yeah. the videos which they sent you. Yeah. The sphere is static. And the Fantus, he work, he moves on a plane. Yep. Which yeah. is the the part we need is actually just a floor. The the reason we have the sphere is to avoid uh, any shadows or uh, stuff in the background. It's just so we can so. move the camera around and always see the like. That's why it's a sphere. Yeah, we, we, we have to okay. project the background to something. And then there's a, an invisible floor uh, that okay. Fantus can walk on as well. So if or if we can make like in this scene, it's actually I made some. I, I think I made some. I yeah, think, yeah, these the, are yeah. actually like 3D tiles that are placed in the scene. So when Fantus walks across, across on top, he actually walks on some, some 3D objects uh, that yeah. are matched uh, just by eye in this case. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but we, we can do all kinds of stuff. You can have like hidden objects or hidden triggers. It's, uh, yeah, anything is, again, anything is possible, yeah, everything we, is hard. We That's can my can use yeah. Like, uh, yeah. We can use like a tracked camera part too. Yeah. And, uh, but luckily, most of the shots here are just static shots. We can yeah. just but we we made some sh some sh shots with ca ca tracked camera as well, and that's also pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Thanks. Yeah, that was it.